Each NSSA Safe Room producer must have a quality assurance plan. The Safe Room design must be performed by registered engineer according to NSSA ICC 500, FEMA 320, and FEMA 361. An installation checklist is developed by the Safe Room manufacturer and the design engineer of record. Once these design steps are complete, both the shelter design and the installation checklist must be reviewed and affirmed by an approved third-party engineer. The third-party engineer must submit their qualifications demonstrating their knowledge of the components of Safe Room design to become approved by the NSSA Board of Directors prior to completing this work. This installation video was prepared to demonstrate the steps used by NSSA producer and installer members to ensure that the safe rooms are properly installed. Henryville setting a epoxy down a 3060 shelter. Um, the excavation was put into the hill to allow the shelter to come out at ground level. Customer has uh, been talked to and is going to put uh, something behind the vents to keep the vent space open and you know, set the base as we're talking here. So you didn't have to have a permit or did you get a permit? No, didn't have to have one. Okay. And I guess you're not in a floodplain up here, are you? <laughs> and your shelter is not over any utility lines? Okay. So we put in a precast concrete slab so we know that it's uh, over three inches thick. So that worked good. We know the concrete strength was better than 1500 and we know that there's no cracks or defects in the slab. So we're in good shape there. So we can set this one down level so we don't have to check it for level. And did my guys talk with you when they came in about damage, that we might leave some ruts in your yard and so forth? I appreciate that very much. And now they've examined the area for the shelter to set, so that's not going to restrict anything. So you'll have room to be able to get around the shelter and be able to get to the door okay. So one of the things that we talked about was having six inches around the back of the shelter to provide adequate ventilation. And you and I talked about putting some kind of a, a mechanism to keep uh, dirt from washing right. down into the ventilation. Uh, adequate room for the door to swing and it looks like there shouldn't be anything in the way there. Okay, well the next thing my guys will do here is they'll check this pad and make sure this pad's level. And then once the pad's level they'll scarify with a, a tool to roughen up the surface to help the bond between the, for the epoxy between the two shelters. And they'll go through and remove some debris. So he's got some paperwork for you and I'll let you visit with Mark. Thanks. Okay, he's preparing here. You'll see the perimeter of the shelter's outlined. He'll go through and scarify the surface to make it so the epoxy will do better at bonding. Well, back to our checklist here. We're marking, mark the outline of the shelter. They scarified the four inch strip around it. Uh, now they'll get the debris out of the way uh, by sweeping and blowing and so forth to get ready for mixing the epoxy. Placing the two components of the epoxy uh, into one container, uh, it's important that we have uh, gloves on, important a person has safety glasses, and real important that a person keeps that away from their eyes. Uh, then it'll be mixed with the drill until it's at a consistent uh, color. Uh, if there's any streaking, it needs to be continued to be mixed, then it'll be placed down onto the concrete base uh, for the shelter set onto. Do the best you can to keep all the foreign material out of the epoxy uh, while it's being mixed. So what he's doing now is he's just hand placing the epoxy on the scarified surface of the base lab uh, prior to placement of the shelter on top. Uh, in the meantime, our other guy will be getting the shelter ready and will confirm that the bottom of the shelter is clean and free of debris 
uh, to ensure the proper bond between the base slab and the upper section and body section of the shelter. We removed all the debris by sweeping, blowing, and vacuuming. Didn't vacuum, I guess, but we got everything out of place. Placed the epoxy on. Uh, the bottom of the d shelter was clean, so you got the gloves on and mixed his epoxy and placed the epoxy on the scarified area. Placed the shelter onto the epoxy, and we always try to make sure that the epoxy isn't over a half an inch thick. Uh, sometimes on a existing concrete slab, there'll be some imperfections on the top of it, and we have to watch that the epoxy isn't over a half an inch thick. Grease the door hinges in the center mechanism sleeve. Confirm the liftoff safety feature of the door. Installed and showed you how the locking clip works. Have you put on the NSSA seal yet, Mark? Yes, sir, I did. Okay, can you tell me what the number is? 19541. 19541. Okay. And the T handle is permanently affixed on this shelter, and the door closes, latches, all of them. Did you see that they protruded through the frame? Okay. The door's secured to the shelter. Thank you. So we got some grease to clean up. Paint looks to be okay. We have a GPS reading to take, and you're going through the hazard sheet with him, and we'll, that will finish up our paperwork. Please now, this is the hazard sheet. Uh, this, if you read this, it'll tell you that the door is really heavy, requires 50 pounds or less. You saw how easy it was to pop off. Uh, it will fall forward. If there's kids out here playing, it could fall on them and hurt them. It could fall on anybody and hurt it. It's a very heavy door. Um, always remember it says, keep door, lift the skate bar inside your shelter and lock from children. I mean, it doesn't, any little kid could just pop this thing off of here if they get in here. Um, yeah, it says that your shelter is loaded, get outside, bring water, snow may get inside. Uh, virtually if you have any epoxy anchored shelter. What we did, we made sure that we had it tipped a little forward, so that way in case anything get, does get in there, it'll wash, it'll roll back out, so okay. you won't be standing water in there. Okay, and these are my copies, and this copy will be your copy uh, when it, when we get it done and copied, and then everybody signs it what they're supposed to. You'll get this copy back okay. in the mail. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. The safe room installation is now complete. The installer ensures that the customer is familiar with all features of the safe room and is notified that they will receive an original copy of the installation certificate installation checklist, and invoice in the mail. This documented process was developed to assure all parties involved that the safe room is properly installed every time. <laughs>